Good morning. Um, today is a difficult day for our family. Um, someone very important to us went home to be with the Lord this week, Gwen, and um, we will get through it. I want to um, greet Phyllis, Gwen's sister, and of course our dear beloved Kay and Kay's, many of Kay's family and sister and friends here. Um, I decided that although today is not uh, the celebration of life service, that will be on the 1st of February at 2 o'clock here. Uh, it was the elephant in the room and we needed to just go ahead and address it. And we're going to do it. And what better way to begin to grieve and to bring closure than to do it in the context of worship. So we're going to worship the Lord today. God is still on the throne, and Jesus is still Lord. Amen? I want to bring your uh, attention to, if I can see this, I'll bring your attention to the upcoming, uh, okay, now I can see. That's debatable, right? Um, board meeting is, will be on Tuesday night at 7 o'clock in Danko Hall. Wednesday night, we will have our usual lineup beginning at 6 o'clock with our Wednesday night stuff. I'm sorry. If you will forgive me, if I'm a little off key this morning. Ushers are coming to pass out the sign-in tablets. Please take this opportunity to record your attendance. If any of your bio information has changed, please update it so that we can better serve your spiritual needs in the coming days and weeks. And as people come in, would you also make sure it gets back down to them? Uh, also, uh, Wednesday, we will start off with our usual... Uh, uh, family night supper at 6 o'clock. The cooks this week is Stephen Thompson and Lee Bowman. The last time they cooked, had a great meal, and so we're looking forward to that. Uh, don't have the menu yet. They'll have that out early week. Uh, and then at 6.30 in the pastor's study, we will have intercessory prayer. We always invite you to join us for a time of intercessory prayer. And then at 7 o'clock, we'll be back here in the sanctuary and I will continue the series that I began a couple of weeks ago on building a positive ID. Uh, the lesson right now is, do you know who you are? And so come and be a part of that choir rehearsal on Thursday night at 7 o'clock here in the sanctuary. And also, uh, we want to remind you that Operation Hope Helping the Homeless continues. The big box is out here. We'll collect, many of you probably know on really cold days, um, on the really cold nights, they open Boutwell Auditorium for the homeless and so forth. But they have to be, they, they put them out like 6 o'clock in the morning. And so uh, they don't have anything to eat or they don't provide a meal or anything like that. So what we're doing is we are, are gathering, uh, where is Jackie? Jackie, come and help me. <laughs> uh, Jackie can help you better with this announcement than me. Tell them what, what, what we're going on with the Operation Hope. We're collecting the same items we collected last year, uh, gallon bags, and we're also collecting small waters and any kind of individually wrapped food items that we can put in them to give the homeless at Boutwell, but also as part of another project that we're working on. So we will continue to need those. Uh, we will collect through the first Sunday in February. And if you wish to make a donation instead of going out and shopping, I'll be glad to take those as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, also want to remind you the Lighthouse, although we didn't meet this week, uh, we'll be meeting uh, on Sunday mornings. Jamie is teaching a new series there. That's the adult Sunday school class on Sunday morning. Also, campus cleanup day on the 25th. Many hands make for light work. So if you can come early and help, we'll be out of here. They're going to have don't, uh, free coffee and donuts and what about ham biscuits and sausage biscuits? Oh, you're not providing that, right? I guess you have to bring that with you. Uh, also, uh, so we want you to know that uh, want to uh, board member on duty today. Uh, the board member on duty today is Carrie King with the back problem uh, and, uh, and the assi assistant board member on duty is James uh, Roberts. The staff person on duty today is Deacon uh, Anita Limbaugh and the uh, shadow on her is the Deacon candidate Alicia Griffin. If you have any questions and needs please see one of them. They'll be glad to help you in any way they can. Uh, on the third Sunday, because it's casual Sunday, we do not have children's church, so the children will stay in the sanctuary, but we will have the children's moment in the service. Um, birthdays this week. 
Alex Mann's birthday is on the 19th. That would be today. James Melton's birthday is the 20th. Jimmy Tarr's birthday is the uh, 20th. Mark Brown's birthday is the 24th. And also Kenneth Turner, one of the greeters' birthday is the 24th. We want to wish them happy birthday. <laughs> we want to thank... Um, Jerry Hanley and Roxanne Lynch and Todd Field, Jimmy Ball, and there were so many more others that I couldn't remember them all, so it's an it's a, uh, error of the head, not the heart. Thank all of you for that wonderful meal that we had this past week. Amen? Praise God. We had great feedback from the other UCC churches, Young Church Christ churches uh, in the city that were here. Uh, they were just really impressed with the generosity and the lovely spirit that goes on here. Much of that can be attributed to Gwen over these last 12 years. Amen? And so we want to thank all of those. And we want to thank everybody in our family for all your wonderful talent that you give. Um, we're going to worship this morning. And we're going to rejoice because I said to uh, Kay on the phone yesterday, you know I can hear that Southern Bell accent in my ear. Pastor? <laughs> Gwen with that Southern Bell accent. I love that voice. Uh, and so we're going to worship this morning. God is good. Let's stand and worship this morning. We're going to start with a great old hymn. When we all get to heaven, we'll sing and shout the victory. For he is worthy. And while it may be a sorrowful day, we can take great peace in knowing when we all get to heaven. And oftentimes like this, we struggle to find that strength of where to turn to. And there's no greater place than God Almighty. And let him be the strength of your life. Sing us this little chorus this morning. Lord, just be the strength of our life today.
strength. Be the strength. Lord, just be the strength of our life today and every day. Lord, that forever eternal hope that we can hold on to song says we are standing on holy ground not because uh, we in church today we're standing on holy ground because the God who created the heavens and the earth and everything in it at a point made time and eternity intersect and he came down and walked among us and J.B. Phillips said at that moment we became the visited planted and so this morning we stand on holy ground just because you're alive and you've walked on this ground. But the song all says that, so says that there are angels all around. I've got one today that's new this week. My part of my great cloud of witnesses has been close and dear to me. As we go into worship this morning, I'd like to think we're standing on holy ground because she's been here too. Let's worship because I know that there are angels all around on holy ground. Sing it, saints. We are standing.
mix of emotions. We come together to mourn a loss, but also to celebrate a life. And I ask this morning that you would send the Holy Spirit to dwell within us and among us, that when we grieve, we might grieve with hope, that when we remember, we might remember with joy, and that as we move forward, we might move forward with courage. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Will you join me this morning in our covenant affirmation of faith? We are the people of God who live as the people of hope. Therefore, let us declare it with our covenant affirmation. I am a child of God. I celebrate God's Holy Spirit coming into my life. Come, Holy Spirit, come. I accept God's Spirit and power to inspire me, guide me, and motivate me to be a witness of the gospel, offering hope, showing faithfulness, and sharing joy. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Amen. You know, this morning, no matter where you are or where you are in life, you are welcome here at Covenant. We ask you now, will you turn and, and greet those around you? morning we have three people who want to unite with us in membership amen? amen praise God praise God and so I'm gonna ask them to come forward and face the congregation they've been through the membership class and we invite you uh, Cynthia Wells Donna Medler and John Shotland please come forward and face the congregation You standing with him? This one's been come on over, baby. <laughs> this one's been around a long time. She just hadn't just not getting around to this, right? Yes. <laughs> Amen. We're reading what is familiar passage of scripture to us here at Covenant from Colossians the third chapter. Let Christ's teachings live in your heart, making you rich in true wisdom. Teach and help one another along the right road with your psalms hymns, Christian songs, singing God's praises with joyful hearts. And whatever work you may have to do, do everything in the name 
of the Lord Jesus, thanking God through him. Cynthia, Donna, and John, and extending a cordial welcome to you as you received into our Christian fellowship. It is becoming that you renew your profession of faith in Christ and your purpose to live a Christian life and to be publicly welcomed into the fellowship of this congregation. Therefore, in the presence of God in this congregation, would you repeat after me your profession of faith? I acknowledge my faith in Jesus Christ and my purpose to live a Christian life, publicly declaring my engagement to cultivate the spirit of Christian fellowship and love and to seek the welfare of this congregation while I remain a member. Amen. All the current members of Covenant, please rise as you're able. Do you, the members of this congregation who are already under the obligations of this same covenant, welcome into our fellowship these, these sisters and brother, and do you promise to encourage them and help them in their Christian life? Would you respond, we do? We do. Will everyone please rise as you're able? Finally, in 1 Peter, we read these words, Therefore be calm, self-controlled, people of prayer. Above everything, be sure you have a real deep love for one another, remembering how love can cover a multitude of sin. Be hospitable to each other without secretly wishing you didn't have to be. Serve one another with the particular gifts that God has given each of you as dispensers of the magnificently varied grace of God. And if any of you preach, then preach your message as from God. And whatever way you serve the church, do it recognizing the fact that God gives you the ability so that God may be glorified in everything through Jesus Christ. Cynthia, Don, and John, with great joy, I welcome you into the fellowship of Covenant Community Church. Amen. Bless you. may be seated. As Pastor said, this is Casual Sunday, and so there's no children's church, but we will have children's moment here. So would all the children, those young at heart, please come forward. Body this morning. You know, this is January 2014. Who has written the wrong year already? I have. <laughs> All right. Come on, sweetie. Come sit right there. All right. You know, and every year we start doing things of changes, new changes, what we want to do different. Well, you know, um, this year I want to remind you there is one change we don't change, and that is we love the Lord our God with all our heart, say it with me, with all our soul and with all our mind. Uh, and then it says, what? Love your neighbor as yourself. Um, so, boys and girls, that is one thing I want us to really remember this year. Because last week, when we had a church congregational meeting, I had a, brought a special friend with me. You weren't here. Some of you weren't here. But he sat right here on my shoulder. Thank you. It was a frog. And the frog reminds me of something very important, and it's fully rely on God. And you know, that's what's so important in this new year, that we need to make sure to rely on God in all that we do. And whenever we see have a, a special friend that didn't do well on a test, or is just sad for some reason, maybe somebody didn't get the job they wanted, 
One of the things we can do is, and loving that neighbor too, is sharing something with them. Sharing a note, pick a flower from the yard, share it with them. To let them know that you truly care for them and love them just like the Lord loves them. So in this new year, I want you to make a special point to do something for someone special this year. Give them that little touch that lets them know that you love them as well as our Lord and Savior. Let's have a word of prayer. Lord, we just thank you for loving us. We come to you all as little children, wanting and desiring your love, which we know we have. And Lord, I just ask as we walk in our steps, that we walk remembering that you're on our shoulders. You're there. You never put anything on us that we can't handle. And Lord, you know what we need. So Lord, I just ask now that you just help us in this new year. Be the person that you would have us to be. Love us. Wrap your arms around us and let us feel your presence. Let us know that you are our God, and I love you. And also, Lord, we want you to remind us to do those special things for people that need that special touch. We all have things in our life that sadden us from some time or another. But, Lord, we have hope because we know one day we'll be with you in heaven. Lord, I just thank you and praise you for all of my little friends up here. Thank you for their time that they come and learn and hear about you. These things we ask in your name. Amen. Join us as we continue in worship this morning with our praise chorus as the deer. over them. Not just that, but they pray over them all week long because they take that list with them. Prayer is one of the most important things that we could possibly do at this church. But sometimes you may have a prayer request that's deeply personal and it didn't get recorded in here for whatever reason. If so, you can signify by the raising of your hand. God knows what those needs are. As we go in prayer this morning, there's a few things that we need to remember today. I'm going to ask Kay Hendricks to come up. Um, Emmett Wright is, was in the emergency room this morning with chest pain. 
Luckily enough, his enzymes come back good, but he's still having chest pain. So we still want to lift him up in prayer. One of, our, one of my good friends for a long time, and also a member here, um, Rod Hyatt, lost her stepfather on Saturday morning. And so we want to remember them also. And I want to take just a few moments. Okay, on behalf of Gwen, her brothers and her sisters, all of the family, and for 32 wonderful years, I anoint you, my sister, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. From everlasting to everlasting, God, you provide us with everything that we need in those moments when we can't take care of ourselves. So God, I ask that you be with this family. I ask that you wrap them in your arms of grace and your arms of mercy. I ask that you touch them, Lord. In this time of sorrow, in this time of grief, wrap them in your grace and your mercy, Lord. Be a light unto them, just like Gwen was a light to each of us. Lord, we also want to remember Emmett this morning. As he's going through his trials, I anoint you, Kay, on his behalf. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, go into that emergency room, Lord, and touch what ails him. You made this body, and you can heal it better than anybody else. So, Lord, I pray that you be with him at this morning. And I pray that you be with this congregation. When was special to each one of us? She was the voice of covenant when you called. So now she can be the voice of heaven. God, thank you for the time that we got to share with Gwen. And thank you for her being a blessing in my life. But Lord, we ask that you touch each and every one here, whether it be trouble in body or trouble in mind and trouble in spirit or trouble in finances, Lord, we know that you can do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask or think. So on this Sunday, we ask that you come into this service. Lord, fill us with your Holy Spirit today and every day. May we be a witness of your grace, of your peace, and of your presence in our lives. We lift up this church. We lift up the church universal. Today, may just one person come to know you as their Savior and Lord. If all these be in the holy name we pray, amen. I want you for the golden sun.
Please rise in spirit and stand as you are able for the gospel reading today is from the book of John chapter 14 verses 1 through 11, 18 and 19 and verse 27. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. There is more than enough room in my father's home. If this were not so, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? When everything is ready, I will come and get you, so that you will always be with me where I am. And you know the way to where I am going. No, we don't, Lord, Thomas said. We have no idea where you're going, so how can we know the way? Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. If you had really known me, you would know that who my Father is. From now on, from now on, you do know him and have seen him, Philip said. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus replied, have I been with you all this time, Philip? and yet you still don't know who I am? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. So why are you asking me to show him to you? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I speak are not my own, but my Father who lives in me does his work through me. Just believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me or at least believe because of the work you have seen me do. No, I will not abandon you as orphans. I will come to you. So the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Since I live, you also will live. I am leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or be afraid. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated.
and it dries all of our tears. The blood that gives me strength from day to day. second verse that says it soothes my doubts and it comes my fears and it dries all my tears it hadn't done that quite yet but it's on its way amen thank you choir thank you Luana because the blood that Jesus shed for me will never lose its power Gwen loved that song you could hear her singing it all in the office she reminded me she was other week that uh, she had, was looking at some kind of um, thing on the TV with Carol Burnett and she said have you ever thought maybe we uh, Mrs. Wiggins and Mr. Tut whatever his name was <laughs> and I said no I'm black and she <laughs> I obviously had another sermon in mind today. Had it all done. You know, she had insisted that I get it all to her by Wednesday and all the bullets and stuff. And, and so I'd gotten it all. I'd, I'd gotten ahead of my schedule this week and had finished a sermon and all this stuff. And then after the sudden shock and I thought of not preaching today. As a matter of fact, I'd gotten uh, uh, Heath to preach for me today. But I got home, and um, I got to thinking, I know Gwen. We've sat in my office a lot of times and chatted a lot over these past 12 years. And she's been my administrative assistant, my confidant, my supporter, my defender. She would defend me now. And most importantly, my sister in Christ and my very dear friend. And I know without a doubt, if she could, she would say to me today in that Southern Belle voice, Pastor, now you know you can do this. And then she would say, the Lord, and the emphasis on the D, the Lord will get you through it. So today, I believe with all my heart, she is part of my great cloud of witnesses. And the Lord will get you and me through this. After all the gospel lessons said this morning, 
in that promise of Jesus to his disciples, I will not abandon you. I will come to you. And so with that in mind, in that ultimate sense, on, when, on Thursday when found out he was true to his word, I will not abandon you. I will come to you. And so this morning, I want to talk about a well-lived life. Let us pray. God, we do thank you for the blood that gives us strength from day to day. We thank you that you will get us through this. And we thank you that you are able to speak even in the difficult moments of our lives. And we're able to hear and understand and receive with gladness your word for us today. As David says in Psalms 19, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. For we pray it in Jesus' name. And all God's children said, Amen and Amen. I titled the song, the song, I titled the sermon today, Gwen Bowen, A Well-Lived Life. I, uh, now this is not her official celebration of life service that will take place, as I said, on February, Saturday, February the 1st at 2 o'clock here at the church. But due to her sudden passing and because she's been such an integral part of this congregation and she's been so much a part of my life, I thought I'd use examples from my life with her here at Covenant uh, for the sermon today. There is no greater witness for the realm of God than a well-lived life. A well-lived life is an incredible asset that make eternal differences, not just in that person's life, but the lives of others. I thought that uh, Patricia was going to try to preach my sermon there for a minute. And it also makes a difference in a church's life. And it makes a difference in God's kingdom's life. And Gwen's life did all of those. Amen? Um, it's interesting that so often what we think is not very extraordinary is certainly extraordinary to God. Often it's an ordinary life like Gwen Bowen's. But what made her life extraordinary is that Gwen was a person who was committed to her walk with God. She was someone who trusted in God. She was someone who loved as God loves. And she lived in God's ways. About 12 years ago, not long after Kay and Gwen started attending Covenant, back then we used to have, when we were on First Avenue, we used to have evening service and a group of us would always, a group would always go out to eat after the service and and a group of about 20 of us went out to eat at Logan's on Crestwood. And I ended up down, and, and you know, they had this table that was sort of an L shape to get us all down there. They, they stuck us in the back of the building. You know, I have issues with being in the back of buildings and buses. But anyway, <laughs> we were back there, and I ended up right in front of Kay and Gwen. And um, I know this is hard to believe, but Kay, Kay was shy back then. Um, Deacon uh, Susan Green, uh, who is the chief uh, consecrator today, uh, had been my administrative assistant, and she had left. Uh, she was finishing up her master's program, and she was leaving to do her student teaching. And so I'm sitting there, and someone had told me that Kay was in nursing, and so I turned to Gwen, and I said, well, what do you do? And she said, um, well, I'm actually unemployed. Uh, she had, I think she had been working for her ex-brother-in-law for several years as an office manager. And I said to her, I told her, I said, come and see me. And uh, because I'm in need of administration, administrative assistant. 
And so on that next Tuesday, she came to see me, and she's been with me ever since. And what I can tell you about Gwen is some may say hers was not an extraordinary life. But in my 12 years of relationship with her, where she was really my confidant and my supporter, my defender, uh, Kay was telling me and said, oh no, I would ask her about something. She said, no, I can't tell you anything about that. <laughs> That's what Pastor J.R. and me. Uh, my sister thing. Gwen's life was one that was committed to her walk with God. She really believed in her walk with God. We've talked about everything you can talk about, me and her. And I can tell you, she is something who took her faith, someone who took her faith serious. And she trusted God. She loved the way God loved. And she was determined she was going to live in God's ways. In other words, I'm just simply trying to tell you that Gwen Bowen was a life well lived. Amen? And whatever the suddenness of her passion and all of that and how that affects us doesn't affect the well-lived life of Gwen Bowen. I remember that she came, uh, the reason they started coming to church, she was off down in Florida on some kind of trip. She was coming home. And she said <laughs> that she lost, she's coming up, what is that road that comes up from Florida? 95? She was coming up and a, a trailer tractor came by and another car clipped and she went swirling all the way across full lanes of the interstate and, so, and she said, she said, God you get me out of this, I'm going to church when I get home <laughs> you know? and she came to church and we are all better for it amen and for my last 12 years I can truly say I've known nothing of her uh, but a life devoted to God her partner, her church, her family, her friends, and me right here at Covenant. There was times when I would hear her on the phone talking in that Southern Belle accent. <laughs> I love that voice, by the way. I'm not making fun of her. I actually love that voice. Uh, you wouldn't believe how many people have, I've met that she's talked to on the phone and said, who's that wonderful woman at the end of the phone when you call your church? Uh, Reverend Franklin over at First Church said that to me. But I've heard her when she's on the phone giving a little hope to someone who just needed to hear a friendly voice. I've listened as sometimes she stopped what she was doing to pray with whoever it was before she passed them on to me. It was a life committed to God, her church, and it was a true witness of God's grace. All in all, I'd say that uh, Gwen Bowen is an excellent example of a well-lived life. As shocked as I was on Thursday evening and still am today, I realized that uh, I needed to do the service today. I needed to preach today. You see, as difficult as it is for me and others to realize that she's gone, she's done what we all have to do. And I needed to seize this moment because I know her faith. Having worked up closely with this wonderful person all these years. And believe me, honey, we have seen each other without any pretense or any mask. We've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly in each other. <laughs> she didn't have any ugly, but I had a little, just a tank bit. <laughs> but she loved me. No care. Sometimes... She, you know, I don't know if you've ever had someone that was your confidant and you just wanted to go off on, uh, uh, you know, on, uh, about somebody that really ticked you off. As a matter of fact, this happened <laughs> two weeks ago. Uh, I was so ticked and I was just going off and, and then she tried to be nice and take their side. And I said, I don't need you to be nice to them right now. I need you to be good here for me. <laughs> she said, oh, I'm sorry, Pastor, and ran out my office. But, you know, that's how she was. She took her faith serious. And she tried to see the good in others. You know, she reminded me what Paul said. Follow me as I follow Christ. 
And I want to say to you with all confidence today, Gwen would be a good example to follow as she followed Christ. Because I know for the last 12 years, that was a well-lived life. I just want to ask you this morning, how is your life going to stack up, say, three days after you've made your transition? Will others, or more importantly, will God say to you or me about our life that it was a well-lived life? It can be if we put our faith in Jesus Christ and seek to live it out like Gwen did. And so this morning, in the context of the gospel that was just read, let me just make a few quick observations about life lessons that I've learned from people of faith like Gwen. When it comes, number one, when it comes to our life with God, it's an eternal investment. It's an eternal investment. Gwen knew that this life wasn't the end. Verse 1 and 2 says, Don't let your heart be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. There are more than enough room in my father's home. If it were not so, what I've told you, I'm going to prepare a place for you. You see, the truth is that for those of us who put our faith in God, our eternity has already been prepared for us. This place is not our home. The old song said we're just passing through. Our treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. And as, as Gwen found out on Thursday evening, plans in heaven are already done for her to spend eternity. Someone texted me yesterday and said, now that Gwen's been there this long, after this time she's been there, what do you think she would be the first thing she'd say if she could come back and say something to her? And I text them back, and I said, uh, you know, there's a song that says, just one moment in God's kingdom pays for it all. So I think if she could come back and say anything, she'd say, if I knew it was this good, I'd have left there a long time ago. <laughs> Amen? The Bible says, eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of men and women the things that God has in store for those who love him. So I have no doubt. I'm going through some pain. I'm going through some adjustment. But I don't have any doubt about Gwen today. She's much better off than me. Amen? And she would, as much as I knew, she wouldn't come back to help me out. <laughs> Amen. I don't, and I wouldn't blame her one bit. Amen? I can tell you with confidence that Gwen understood that truth, this idea of an eternal investment. Over the years, we've talked about everything you can think about. Often, we would share life lessons as preacher's kids, you know, my mom, the Pentecostal preacher, her father, the Southern Baptist minister. And over the years, I've gotten to see many of those life lessons up close through her service and through her faithfulness to God and covenant and how she, and to me, whom she was just devoted to. And, 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 and I've seen how unconditional love and acceptance. There's, I, I was telling the staff as we gathered to pray this morning, I'm dreading that call from San Francisco we had a person who here was sort of an outcast among even folks around here who moved to San Francisco. And um, it's been seven years now that Kimberly's been gone. And every other week, that call came to Gwen. And Gwen had been that voice on the end of that phone for seven years just talking with this person. Joe, if you're in the office, you might want to, I need to make you aware of that call because it will come. Uh, and, and, and you see, nobody else knew. I knew it. Maybe Kay and the other Kay knew it. But not a lot of people knew that that call was going on. Why did she take her time to do that? Because she understood the idea that what she was doing was an eternal investment. And she knew that part of that was 
You have to love people unconditionally. You, you have to accept those who don't seem so lovable. Uh, this person was a challenge to be around sometimes, quite frankly. But never for Gwen. And let me tell you, her, her efforts were not ordinary. She was an example of someone as ordinary as it gets sometimes, but who turned her life over to God, and she held nothing back. And, and, and so, she, you know, she was looking forward to hear God say, well done, good and faithful servant. We only get one life. And we're so shocked as we were this past Thursday, we began to find out that it is all too soon past. But she understood that only what you do for Christ will last. And so when it comes to our life with God, Gwen understood it's an eternal investment. The second thing is that when it comes to our life with God, we have an eternal God. God. Um, verse 3 and 4 says, When everything is ready, I will come to you and get you, so that you will always be with me where I am. That's what she experienced on last Thursday. And you know the way where I'm going. And Jesus told, said to uh, Philip, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. I want to say something to you this morning that might be, seem striking. The reality is we can have all the direction we will ever need or ever want in our life if we'll simply learn to trust God and trust in Christ. Every now and then, there would be nobody here but me and Gwen. And sometimes I'd go over and sit in the chair in front of her desk, or sometimes she'd come in and sit at the chair right there beside my desk. That's what she always said in my office when she'd come in. And we'd just talk. And, and many times it was funny. Uh, other times it was about moments in our memories uh, something made an impression on me. She often talked about what her dad would do in certain instances and so forth. And sometimes they just became like little mini sermons to each other. If I was down, she'd preach me a mini sermon. If she's down, I'd preach her a mini sermon. She was better at it than I was. And on one of those occasions, I was sharing with her uh, the time I first went to this thing called church summer camp. Out in the country where I grew up in Fieldale, Virginia, our little church didn't have no such thing. Never heard of a church summer camp. Now, in the city of Bassett, Virginia, at my favorite aunt's church, Oak Hill Baptist Church, uh, they did go to summer camp. And so she, I'm being the apple of her eye, decided to pay for me to go to summer, church summer camp. And so my dad offered to pay for me, but she insisted. And I remember sitting there telling Gwen about this experience, and, and I know it's hard to believe, and I said to her, I said, I know it's hard to believe, but I haven't always been outgoing. At that age, I was really shy, and, and uh, I didn't know any of these folks at Grand and Anna's church, and they certainly, I certainly didn't know anybody my age at Grand and Anna's church, and I was shy. And when I said that, Gwen just hollered, laughing, tick me off. I said, what are you laughing at? And she said, I'm sorry, Pastor. <laughs> the thought of you being shy is just too funny to me. <laughs> that was not our best moment together, okay? <laughs> but I let it go, <laughs> and I told the rest of the story. And I want to tell you, despite her laughing at me, I thought I was over that until just now. But I... <laughs> I remember that childhood spirit experience as being something very scary, and that's what I was trying to get across to her in that story. Going to this rustic camp that I'd never seen anything like, not knowing a soul there. And I told her, what was the redeeming grace was, Granny Nanny told me that she was going, that she had volunteered to be there as one of the cooks. And so just knowing that Granny Nanny was going to be with me. I waltzed up to that registration table, one of the bravest kids in the world. I was ready to take on anything. 
And I remember telling Gwen that it's sort of like that when we walk with God. Jesus has promised to be our God, to go with us, that he will not abandon us. And that's not just for now, that is for always. And I want to tell you something this morning. Jesus has promised to be by your side. Okay, by your side. Phyllis, by your side. He will not abandon you. He will come to you. He is an eternal God. You can count on it. That's the promise of God. When it comes to our life with God, Jesus is better than any GPS you can buy. Amen? We let him know where we need to go, or better yet, he lets us know where we need to go. And if you hear Jesus speaking to you, say, recalibrate, not listen. Amen? Amen? Because when it comes to our life with God, we have an eternal God while we're over here and even when we get over there. Amen? A third thing is when it comes to our life with God, you need to hear this. We're never left alone. We're never left alone. You can be by yourself and not another person around you, but you're never alone. Verse 18 and 19 reminds us of a tremendous promise. No, I will not abandon you as orphans. I will come to you. Soon the world will see me no longer, but you will see me. And since I live, you also will live. Whether on in this life or whether we move on to the next life, Jesus has promised us we will never be alone. I know that one of the hardest things people have trouble with at the end of this earthly life is letting go. And I have to be honest, I'm struggling a bit with that, with Gwen's death, because she was so dear to me and so sudden and so unexpected. Those of you who have been around know that I had another death close to me in the last six months, but I saw that one coming. And I could read the tea leaves on that one. This one, I didn't see coming. So I, I, I'm not going to lie. As a pastor, I need to be honest with you. I'm not going to stand here and tell you that uh, my heart isn't absolutely shattered and I'm not struggling. Because this is someone who's been very dear to me. But Kay, her partner, shared something with us Thursday evening that stuck in my mind. And later on, I got to think, you know, maybe unknowingly, Gwen had this intuitive feeling that she was going home. She'd called you, Phyllis, and your brother on Wednesday, I think it was, Thursday morning, to let you know she loved you. Um, I don't know, Wednesday night we had this special thing here at the church, and Gwen got... I mean, uh, Kay got to serve Gwen her last communion right here at the altar. Um, and perhaps in her spirit, she already knew all the unfinished business of this life had been finished. And I know that Gwen believed Jesus when he said, I will come to you. Sometimes when she struggled with her fibromyalgia and stuff, she would say to me, but I'm not alone. I know he'll see me through. And I just want to ask you this morning, do you believe that? Do you believe he will not abandon? Jesus promised that he would not abandon. And if you believe that when it comes to our life with God, you know that we will never be left alone. That's one of the life lessons she told me, she's taught me in her life with me these last 12 years. Finally, I think I'm going to make it through. <laughs> when it comes to our life with God, despite the turbulence of life, we have a peace that lasts forever. We have a peace that lasts forever. Today, Gwen gets to 
have some experience with what forever means. Right now, we still struggle with it. Nona texted me yesterday and she, she said, this just sucks. And I text back, yep. But we have hope. In verse 27, Jesus said, I'm leaving you with a gift. Did you hear that? It's a gift from God. That means nobody can take it from you. Now, you can leave it on the table. I wouldn't advise it. But nobody can steal it from you. It's a gift. And he says, that gift is peace of mind and heart. Oh, my heart's broken. Don't, don't get me wrong. I'm struggling. But I got a peace about this. Because I know, I know, the enormous loss that it is to this church isn't close to what it is for me or Phyllis or Kay. So yeah, I'm absolutely heartbroken. But I've been blessed to talk with this wonderful person enough over the years, this wonderful woman, to know that I have no doubt she is with the Lord. You couldn't make me doubt that for all the tea in China. Do they have tea in China? And I know she's at peace forever. Last week's scripture said God shows no favoritism. So I know that she's with the Lord. There's no greater sense of a greater witness to the realm of God than a life well lived. To that end, maybe Gwen's life wasn't extraordinary to some of you, but I can tell you she had made an extraordinary commitment to God. I can tell you she walked in that. I saw it with my own eyes. I don't have to have anybody tell me. And I can tell you she was committed to love the way God wants us to love. On those days when I wasn't my best in the office and maybe just a tinge of ugly, she still loved me unconditionally. Let me ask you, what is your life going to look like when it's over? And as we painfully know today, none of us know when that's going to be. I want to ask you, have you allowed God to let your ordinary life be committed to him so he can use you in extraordinary ways like Patricia talked about just to reach out and touch someone who needs to know about God's love the most powerful witness there is I think it be found in Gwen a well lived life Jesus said I'm leaving you with this gift peace of heart and mind and the peace I give you is not like the world give you. don't be troubled don't be afraid the songwriter said it's peace peace wonderful peace coming down from the father above and then the songwriter invites that peace to sweep over his spirit fathomless billows of love. This morning, I know our hearts have been heavy, but I've come to tell you that he's given us a peace that the world cannot give us. And yes, we will grieve and we'll get through this, but only if we allow that wonderful peace of Christ to come through us. Let's stand and sing.
I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. That's what Jesus said. And besides John 3, 16, that's probably some of my favorite scripture. But there's so many in our community that does not know that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And it's your financial contributions that allows us to go from this pulpit to the pews, to the parking lot, and beyond to preach to those in our community that he is the way, the truth, and the life. Will the ushers please come forward? Father, we're thankful for this day. We're thankful for this opportunity that you've allowed us to gather in your house and praise and worship you. Father, I ask right now that you'll bless these gifts of tithes and offerings. Allow us to be good stewards of this money so that we may reach the ones who are lost in our community. It's in the name of Jesus Christ I pray. Amen. Sometimes, in our efforts for a life well-lived, we fall a little short of the mark. Sometimes we stumble. Sometimes we trip. Sometimes we fall flat on our faces. Fortunately, we serve a God who stands ready to forgive us. Yes. We need only ask. Therefore, before we come to this communion table, please join me in taking a moment to confess those things that may have separated us from God, from one another, or from the best in ourselves. Let us join together in the prayer Jesus taught us, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God's forgiveness empowers us to lead a life well lived. Therefore, know this morning that God has heard your confession, and you are forgiven. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Hallelujah. Amen. On the night before he would be given over to betrayal and death, Jesus gathered in an upper room with those closest to him, with his family of choice. And he knew that that family was about to suffer a loss. He didn't want to leave them without hope. So he left them with a tangible reminder of the promises that he had made to them and still makes to us today. Because during that meal, he took bread from the table, and he blessed it, and he broke it, and he offered it to them and said, Take and eat, each of you. This is my body, which will be given for you. Likewise, at the end of the meal, he took the cup, lifted it, and gave thanks, and blessed it and said, Take and drink, each of you. This is my blood, which will be poured out for the one and for the many, for the forgiveness of sins. And as often as you eat of this bread and drink from this cup, you do so to recall me into your memory until I come again. If you feel comfortable, stretch forth your hands as we collectively ask God to consecrate these elements. God, I hold in my hand these simple elements, the seed of the field and the fruit of the vine, we ask now that you would send your Holy Spirit upon them, that they might truly become for us the body and blood of Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. Here at Covenant, we hold an open communion. That simply means that you don't have to be a member of this church or of any church. You are welcome at this table, whether you've been here a hundred times or whether this is the first service you've ever joined us for. We ask only that you come seeking a closer walk with God. At the end of the service, there will be intercessors available here in front of the altar who will be happy to pray with you one-on-one -on -one for any needs that you may have. Please remember that communion is a reverent time in our service, and this morning in particular, an emotional time. Please be respectful of those sitting around you who may be having a quiet conversation with God. The table has been made ready. Come as the ushers direct. Um, uh, I, I know that there are a lot of first-time visitors here today. I uh, just want to remind you, we serve by intention, means we dip the, uh, the wafer in the juice and place it in your mouth. If you would like to just receive the wafer, you can cup your hands and they will place the unjuiced wafer in your hands as you come for communion. And you also can come with your, uh, your partner or significant other or group of people who are you with. Just wanted to make that 